Like I'm doing. You gotta make your payments, Pumpkin. Now you listen to me. You put this car down right now. Okay, fine. I'm just gonna have to call my boyfriend and have him take care of this. Alan, would you come out here, please? Come here. Uh, I, I think I heard the phone, honey. Uh, I'll just, uh, be, uh, inside. Come on. How am I supposed to make my payments if I can't even get to work? All right. Fine. If that's the way you want to be, buddy boy, that is just fine with me. But I tell you something. You are going to be sorry that you ever... Oh. I am so sorry. No problem. Just push to the lever up and to the left to lift the car. Right. Uh, and, and then what should we do? Run for your lives. <laughs> I'll be inside. Universal Investments. It's me. Alan, what did he say? Oh, he's got a couple of bruised, if not broken toes. A doctor to remove one of his toenails. Oh. Well, at least he didn't get the car. Yeah, well, he says you called him Fatty Boy, Amanda, and that you threatened him. Buddy Boy. I called the man Buddy Boy. Look, he's going to sue us, and he's going to win unless we can quickly come up with the $15,000 settlement that he's asking for. Well, maybe we can take a second out on the house. Hello? We're renting the house because the bank wouldn't give us a first. <sighs> Have you hit your boss up for the advance yet? I asked him if I could talk to him when he was free, but, Alan, I really don't think it's a very good idea. Yeah, well, here's a good idea, Amanda. We're broke, okay? You have no choice. Besides, you deserve something for looking the other way all this time. Not over the phone. Oh, come on. What's the big deal? This is Vegas. Everybody knows he's running a boogie ring for the mob. Alan! Okay. What if he happened to be listening? Amanda! Yes, sir, Mr. Santoro. Look, I'm just finishing up in here. I'm getting ready to go. Tell you what. If you still want to talk... Now's the time. I will be right in, sir. Alan, did you just hear that? Look, Amanda, this is our chance, okay? Listen, I don't know if I can go through with this. No, 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 no. You are going hey. in that office, and you are going to ask him. Now! Look at that time! That's not my problem! Listen, I'm telling you, you guys better get your act together. Come on. Come in, come in. The fact is, the package was supposed to be here three hours ago. I don't care that the courier's on his way. Look, I got an event in two hours. You leave me no time to do my business. Which word don't you understand? The deal is off. You're lucky I'm going to hold the thing for you. I can't do that? Oh, I can't do that, huh? Watch me! What? Now is not a good time, sir. Sit down. You got something you want to ask me? Ask me. Vincent, could you please get me two aspirins from the top drawer of credenza? The what? The Fuhrer. Oh. Well, <clears throat> nothing really. 
I just wanted to <laughs> ask you if you were feeling okay. As a matter of fact, I'm not. I think I'm coming down with the flu. I've got this splitting headache. I've got chills. Vince is going to drive me home. But I want you to do something for me, Amanda. A package is going to be dropped off here around noon. It's a very important package. So when it comes, I want you to personally take it out of its lockbox and put it in my safe, okay? I don't know that combination, sir. You don't have to, Amanda. Look, the safe is open. All you got to do is put it in there, close the door, spin the dog. I <laughs> Did you want one or two? Ya mama Luke! Mr. Santoro. Sir. There's just one other thing. Yes. I really... hope that you feel better. Yeah. Me too, boss. Ten minutes to collect our earnings and put it all in the last race. Let's Whoa, go. Whoa, wait a minute. We said we would quit when we were ahead. There's been a slight change of plan, Amanda. Alan, we accomplished what we came here to do. Let's not push our luck. <laughs> Honey, sweetie cakes, pumpkin pie. There are four names circled on this form, okay? Three of which came in first. This isn't about luck. Okay, I admit the last one is probably a sure thing, but Amanda, I please! I've done the math. Listen. With this kind of money at our disposal, in less than 15 minutes, we are both going to be multi-millionaires. Multi-millionaires? Multi. Honey, honey, hey, 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 who wants to be a millionaire? Huh? Oh, I do! Yeah. <laughs> Excuse us. Excuse us. Can I help you? Yes, I would like to put $250,000 on horse sense, please. To win. Do you have any idea what the mob does to people like us? <laughs> I mean, do you have any idea what you've gotten us into? <laughs> Don't you dare lay this all on me. You're the one who had to bet the last race. Do you remember that part, Alan? Me, 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 Yes, me? you! I'm not the one who, who called me with this bright idea in the first place. <sighs> Alan, what are we going to do? Get out. What? Get out. Where are you going? 
Look, the less you know Amanda, the better. Alan, I think you told Amanda, just please, when you wake up in the morning, I want you to go into work when nothing ever happens, Oh, okay? no. I am not going back there. No way. Amanda, will you just listen to me for once? Excuse me, ma'am. Looks like the fire started when they blew the safe. We'll have to do a complete investigation. Mr. Centuro, I'm going to need you to make me a complete list of everything you can recall was in that safe. We'll do. Alan, Jamie. Uh, Amanda? Yes, sir, Mr. Centuro. What happened? Well, it's just a little setback. Look, it's going to take us a while to clean all this up. Why don't you take the rest of the week off? Oh, absolutely. I'm just so sorry about all this. You and Al, you could use a few days off together, couldn't you? Alan, he so hates to be called Al. Didn't realize you knew his name. It's part of my business to know things. Well, I certainly hope you find whoever did this horrible thing. We will. We'll see you next week, sir. Amanda, you do know that I had hidden 24-hour security cameras installed last year, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alan! I'm in here. Oh, I understand why you trashed in Toro's place. And he, and he sent his girl on bits in there looking for the bunny. The buddy. The bunny. The bunny? Oh. <laughs> the money. Well, we don't have it anymore. Did you tell him that? No, are you kidding? We'd both be at the bottom of Lake Mead right now if we knew that. We've just got to stall until... Until what? Alan, I can't afford to make my car payments. How am I supposed to come up with a quarter of a million dollars? I don't know. I don't know. We've only got till Friday. Well, then, we are dead. We are absolutely... Going to Flagstaff. Arizona? They say he's worth millions. Millions? Wait, wait, millions. Millions. <laughs> okay, so why, where is this grandfather and why haven't I heard about him before? Oh, he's done in Flagstaff at the VA hospital. He could easily afford a lot better, but he wants to be with his old Marine Corps pals. My mom's been after me to visit him for years, but I guess he's got all kinds of health problems and stuff. Uh, Amanda, Flagstaff? That's bad. That's, that's, that's... I mean, you know, Vincent warned me what would happen if either of us tried to skip town. If you've got a better idea... I would love to hear it. Nope. No problemo. You go right on ahead and go get your little advance on the family inheritance. Alan, there's a very good chance he's not going to give me the money anyway. Oh, what? Come on. I'll let something happen to his, his sweet, loving granddaughter? <laughs> I don't think so. He recently got religion, so I don't think he would be too thrilled to know his money is going to pay off a mob debt. Oh. No. No, wait, see, that's perfect. That's perfect because, you know, uh, the fact that he's become this religious nut just means that he's getting soft in his old age, huh? <laughs> Come on. Hey, uh, when was the last time you saw the old geezer anyway? When that picture was taken. 
Ooh, that's bad. Have fun. Nathan Tucker. I'm looking for his room. 315, right there. over to your room. Oh, thank you very much. I have come by to visit you so many times, but you just probably don't remember. <coughs> oh, hi. I'm trying to visit my grandfather, so if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> your grandfather? Really? Really? So, you're his granddaughter. And you are quick. Listen, would you please leave us alone now? The two of you are close. Yes. It's just that I don't ever remember him. We making... are very, very close. And if you don't leave, I'm going to have to get one of those big, mean nurses outside to take you out of here, okay? Boy, this is a miracle. That's what it is, a miracle. After all those years that he and Hilda trying to have kids, and all of a sudden, old Arnold's got himself a granddaughter. Arnold? Oh, why'd you have to go and ruin it, Nate? She was just getting started. What? I'll be your granddaddy any time, sweetie. <laughs> you mean I just... Oh. Young lady, I think you and I need to have a little talk. I have no good excuse for not returning any of your letters or phone calls over the last few years. And to be brutally honest, we wouldn't even be talking now, except... Except for the fact that I need a quarter of a million dollars, and I need it now. On top of which, other than the fact that it's a matter of life and death, I can't even tell you what it's for. <laughs> Who am I trying to fool? Look, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I really am. Amanda. As long as it's a matter of life or death. You will never regret this. But under one condition. He wants you to take him fishing? I know, that's it. Can you believe it? You have no right checking him out of this facility. Oh, I think I do. Please don't come <laughs> okay. to me. Your oh, grandfather's on. condition you needs need all of medical stuff? supervision. Amanda? Alan, listen. I've got to run, but I will call you when I'm on my way back, okay? And besides that, I you can't to... use this phone for personal calls. <clears throat> Is there anything else I need to sign for his release? How about his death certificate? I appreciate what you're trying to do. I really do. But what harm could a trip down to the local fishing hole really cause? Bye-bye. Go. Nope. See ya. I'd say people have been doing a lot more than fishing in it. 
And I think with a little bit more of a positive attitude, this place could really work. Now, if we head over there, we can sign the right up. The deal is that we go fishing exactly like the last time we were together. Okay, let's just bring that thought a little bit more down to earth. Exactly, like before. You know, I don't think it is necessary to recreate things quite so literally. It is if you want a quarter of a million dollars. Now, the last time we were together, we got in the car, we drove up to my favorite fishing place in Redemption, Montana. Come on, Nathan. In Redemption, Montana. Listen to what you're saying. Nathan, please, you can't be serious. Redemption, Montana. 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 No, no way, Mom. No, nothing happened. Just... Listen, Vincent warned me what would happen if, if, if we tried to skip town. Now, 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 crossing over the border into Arizona is one thing, but, but Montana is definitely out of the question. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm in control here. I am in control, and I say you are definitely not going. Although I don't really care for this beatnik music, I'm willing to put up with it as long as I can listen to a half hour of my favorite radio show every day. Listen, before we go any further, I think it's important that there are a few other things that we get straight. First, the terms of our agreement are that we drive to Redemption, Montana, and we go fishing only once at the lake. No more, no less. Do you understand, Nathan? I prefer you stop using my first name and call me Grandpa. Secondly, upon completion of said agreement, the full amount of $250,000 will be wired to my account. You're tailgating this car in front of Thirdly, us. Thirdly, there will be no dawdling. It is imperative that I fulfill my end of this agreement, and we have that money wired back home by Friday. You got that? You better watch what you're doing if you want to make this next turn. Oh. <laughs> Why did we just leave the main interstate? Oh, uh, the interstate misses all of this stuff. Oh, 190, much more scene. Did you just hear a word I said? No sightseeing. Don't worry, this is a shortcut. That interstate just snakes around so I can hit all the sizable towns, you know. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, 190, straight shot to the big sky. Well, it saves a lot of time. Much more scene. Much more. You call this a shortcut? We have been sitting behind Bessie and her pungent pals for well over an hour. It's six o'clock, Nathan. Six o'clock? I had no idea it was that late. Oh, thanks, honey. I almost missed my favorite radio program. Thank you, darling. Yeah. This is Decision Today, the daily radio ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Machine of Amanda. And Alan. Leave a message. Right, Alan? Right, pumpkin cakes. Alan, it's me. I'm sorry to be calling so late, but thanks to the old man, I ran into a few more snags, including spending the last two hours following a poultry truck. We're driving up old Highway 190. Should be in Vernal, Utah by... Perfect. No time for a sit-down breakfast. We've got a schedule to keep. Hope you like your coffee black. Perfect. Never gonna understand why some people want to mess up good coffee with a whole lot of fancy schmant. Did you ever 
religion require you to pray like that? Depends. On what? On if I'm sacrificing the meat myself. Oh. I generally do it on a stone altar, but I, I couldn't find any rocks around. I'm kidding. So was it before every meal or what? You may find this kind of hard to understand, but it's not that I'm actually required to pray. I pray because I have a relationship with God. And I enjoy bringing him in to every part of my life. A relationship with God. <sighs> What's so funny? Nothing. It just... Well, I guess it just seems a little ironic, that's all. Ironic? How do you mean? Oh, come on. Come on. What do you mean? All right, then. It's just that my dad told me that you were so busy with your military career and the family oil business that he hardly even knew you. He said that he probably had about five conversations with you in his entire life, and that was only when he got in trouble. So it just seems a little bit silly to me to hear you say that you have had an intimate relationship. <laughs> Nathan, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. That's okay. I deserve that. No, you didn't. I'm sorry, really. Your dad exaggerated slightly, but he wasn't far off. I wasn't much of a father when I had my chance. You have no idea what I'd give to do it all over again. Look, Nathan, we've got a long drive ahead of us, so maybe you and I should just stick to talking about the present. What do you say? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's talk about you. Uh, you got a boyfriend back home? Actually, yes, I do. His name is Alan. He's studying to be an accountant. Alan? Oh, you think it's going to turn into something serious? Actually, it already has. We moved in together a year ago. A year? Well, that's a commitment. Yeah. Don't worry. We will get married eventually. But until Alan gets on his feet, we're just, you know... Jacking up. Hey, now, I don't like the sound of that very much. I guess you think that's probably immoral or something. Well, yeah. But it's not that I'm trying to judge you, Amanda. It's just, I'm, I'm concerned. Concerned? Yes, concerned. I mean, I mean, what kind of a assurance could you have about the seriousness of this man's commitment? I mean, suppose you wind up having a baby. I mean, I would not trust a man that would put you in that situation. Not... Trust Alan. <laughs> um, Mr. Santoro, sir, um, the, the, the reason that, that I came here this morning is, um, is, uh, uh, uh um, Amanda left town. What? I, I mean, really, I told her not to go, but she just went anyway, and, and I just thought that you should know that I had nothing to do with this. I mean, I didn't even know that she stole your... She your... had my money with her. Money? Sort of. In a, in a manner of speaking. I want you to find her. Uh-huh. I want you to bring her here. Okay. Now. Yes. Okay. Um, sir, if you could just not, not, not get upset with me, because you see, after all, I did come here of my own free will. To... Do you think you're upset? Well, well, just... well, do you think this is upset? Or... I'll show you upset! I'm going to replace it, sir. I mean... Oh, you're going to replace an original Gustav Berman? Huh? Well, you know, it really wasn't that great, sir, and I could probably get you something better, so... 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 It's... Right eye. R right eye? Right... Is that some kind of code word, or... Vincent? What are you doing? I'm 
may be old, but I don't have to go deaf. I'm sure your parents didn't approve of all of your music choices either. They didn't much care for Boogie Woogie, but they were very fond of Glenn Miller. Of course, those were the days when music had an actual melody. Okay, fine. I think I must be getting old too. Happens to the best of us. Hey, what about that? You got any problems with country? I always had a soft spot in my heart for Grand Ole Opry. Well, alrighty. Oh. <laughs> Here we are, riding along. We ain't got much, but this is song. One thing that we both agree. Santoro, we're uh, ready to fly. Uh, you're positive you know where she's headed? Oh, oh, yes, sir. She left a message saying that she would be in Vernal, Utah tonight. And, and if you would just let me add, sir, that you will not regret giving me this opportunity. Shut up! Don't misinterpret my graciousness for weakness, Al. Uh, actually, it's Alan, sir. Oh, oh, but Al's good. Al's great. My mother called me Al. Okay, Al. I'm sending Vincent with you just to make sure the job gets done. Oh, good thinking, sir. Oh. I expect to hear from the two yous in a few hours with good news. Damage! Oh, don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Santoro. Huh? I won't let you down. Hey, you're only allowed two pieces of carry-on. Uh, goodbye, sir. Just get in here! Is a ticket, so I think it's time we head back to the car. Yes, be calm. But it is hot up here. I'm burning up, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Oh, I'm hot. Nathan. Huh? What is that? What is what? Right there on your chest. Hello? Oh, that. Yeah, that's why I have to take this pill. So you have had open heart surgery, and here I am letting you clog your arteries with junk food? No, no, it's not like that. My arteries aren't clogged, they're just kind of brittle. See, I have an aneurysm on my aorta. It's, uh, it's like the outside line is torn open, and I got a bubble. Kind of like a, an inner tube that's trying to bulge out of a split tire. You know what I mean. So they fixed it? They tried to, but the tear was too close to the heart, so there's nothing they could do but just have me take these blood thinners. So those nurses weren't exaggerating? Well, you see, uh, the big blowout could happen any time now. What? No sweat. Nathan! <laughs> I'm ready. How can you be so... Honey, it's the Lord. He gives me peace. I don't say that I like having this condition, but at least I know where I'm going when this old body gives out. Oh. What is that? To remind you to take another pill, or...? That's my spiritual vitamin. Six o'clock. Let's get back to the car, babe. All right. Wait a minute. You actually asked for this car? Oh, yeah. The family's got them stashed all over the country. And this is the last one out west that still has an operable eight-track player. Oh, whoa. I haven't seen one of those things since... Uh... The late 70s. Yeah. And then they phased them out for those lousy little cassettes. Hey, so what's in here? No, don't, 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 don't. David Cassidy? You like David Cassidy, too? Well, mostly just his stuff during the Partridge family. Sure! <laughs> hey, look at this! The best of the Partridge family! Oh, man, I remember all these songs! Hey, you want to know something? My mother once took me to see David Cassidy in concert. Yeah? He was live on stage. You're kidding. Front row seats? Oh, man, I can't believe this! <laughs> hey, 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 you know what I gotta hear? I think I love you! <laughs> so, Jesus is coming again, right? right. And why would he want to do that? What do you mean? I mean, if he came here once and he was crucified, why would he want to come back? When he returns, things will be a little different. Oh, really? And how is that? He's coming back to be the world's judge. You'll want to be ready when you meet him in that role. Hey, 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 
there she is, there she is, there she is. Okay, okay, now stay close. Too obvious. I'm gonna try to talk to her without the old man knowing. Have you ever known me to be too obvious? Peeping Tom. Hey, dog, get away from there. Um, <laughs> this really isn't what it. Don't ever do that again. Get out of here. What's that all about? Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Just a poor, confused young man. Let's go. I've had enough of this place. Good idea. Mr. Santoro would like to speak with you. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, hello, Mr. Santoro, sir. Oh, oh, no, we're having a fine time, sir. What I mean by that is, is, is that we're, we're, we're on the job. Yes, as a matter of fact, we just saw her. Uh, to be honest, um... You know what? I haven't actually talked to her just yet, but 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 I. No, yes, I I I would like to do that right now, sir. But you see, uh, uh, funny thing is, is <laughs> she already left town. What? No, I, I I don't know exactly where she's going, but that. No, Mr. Santoro. Please, sir, if you would just if you would stop yelling, sir, for just two seconds. Sir, if I might say, I think you might be expecting just a little bit too much here. Yeah. He wants to talk to you. Hello. Vincent? Yeah. Right here. Yes, I'm writing it down. Don't you worry, Mr. Santora. I got everything under control. Okay, bye. I can't believe you hit me, Vincent. Oh, yeah, I feel awful about that. Hey, come here, you gotta look at it. Look, it feels swollen and, it, and it's really bulbous. Oh, what? It's fine. Oh. <laughs> Hey, hey, what are you doing telling them that everything's okay back there? We don't even know where they're headed. Oh, they're not going to get far. I think we made the wrong turn after we went through that tunnel back there. Well, then where did that put us? Somewhere between I think we're lost and we're definitely hopelessly lost. Didn't they teach you how to read maps in the military? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Between battles and in our free time, we'd all just sit there reading a map of Utah. <laughs> oh. Guess they didn't teach you anything about Volkswagen engines when you were in the Marine Corps either, did they? No, I'm afraid not, kid. We were fighting the Germans, remember? Right. Right. Oh, 
Come on. Come on, please. Hold it. It's not going to stop. What? Look, it's sugar. Sugar? I found it on the gas intake port. It wasn't there when I filled the car, so someone must have spiked their gas tank while I was trying to chase off the pervert. Oh, back at the gas station. It was Vincent in the caddy. Who in the world is Vincent? Nathan, I think I need to tell you something else. I mean, now that they're after us and both of our lives are in danger. Someone's after us. I think it's only fair. Our lives are in danger? Well, yeah, I think so. We definitely need to have another talk. Right. And that's about it. I know I should have told you everything from the start. Why didn't you? I was afraid you wouldn't help me. I was afraid you'd be judgmental and not care. Amanda, we all make mistakes. We both know I've certainly made enough of my own. Yeah, well, I think I've taken it to a whole new level. In the past three days, I have lost $250,000, my job, probably my boyfriend, and uh, most of my possessions have been destroyed. Now, you and I are stranded out here in the middle of the Utah desert with a mafia posse closing in on us. Oh, it's not that bad. Really? Then tell me, Nathan, what else could possibly go wrong? Well, I'm sure there's nothing else. Get the car and put it in neutral. Stuck in here, Nathan! Get out of the car right now! Get out of the car! Get out, get out, now don't stay anymore! Get out! I'm not going to get out! get the stuff around the outer part? Mm-mm. I just eat them. Uh, you, you, you got the, you got the, the mustard on you. It's, it, it's a... I mean, I mean it, it's just, it, it's right there. You know? Hey! Right, sorry. <sighs> Who are we waiting for again, anyway? Frank Lightfoot. He's a cleaner for us in this section of the country. Cleaner? Yeah, you know, when things get all messed up, he comes in and cleans them up for you. He can track down anybody. I, I don't know. I mean, is, is this really necessary, Vinny? Don't worry, he's very good. Good? Good? In what way is he good? Hold on, hold on. This Frank now. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, right, professional cleanup guy. You almost had me there for a minute, Vinny. That was a good one, that was a good one. You think this is funny? <laughs> I'm serious. The client whose money your girlfriend stole is a very prominent figure in New York. And if he doesn't get that money back soon, Mr. Santoro's reputation could be hurt. So he's not taking any chances here. <laughs> There's nobody here, Vinny. Yeah, well, people at the top of the game are like that. They're hard to spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you go and offend him now. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Frank. Sorry, wherever you are. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Oh, yeah, hey, Frank, hey, hey, Frank, I got a good job for you. Why don't you clean up my car, Frank? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, Vinny, I'm not going to fall for that, okay? Nobody's that good. Sorry. So, Frank, you know this part of the country better than I do. Which way? Good. The best. Frank, what are you 
would have saved your condo. Can't believe they didn't even stop to see if we were okay. Takes a heavy train like that almost a mile to finally stop. Whatever is left of your car is probably in the next town by now. <gasps> Did you hear that? That was a wolf. <laughs> Coyote. They rarely attack, and only in packs. <gasps> really large packs. Don't worry, we're all right. Besides, I got a good friend. Lived right over the border in Wyoming. <gasps> well, just how do you think we're going to get to Wyoming, Nathan? Walk? I mean, we are out in the middle of nowhere. By the time someone finds us, the coyotes will have picked our bones clean. <laughs> what are you smiling at? Well, you probably don't remember this, but the last time we went camping, you got scared too. What did you do to comfort me? Well, I just told you to sit back and... Relax, and then we talked about the stars. <laughs> and did that work? Mm-hmm. When you were a little girl, I told you that each one of those stars up there was as big as our sun. And if one of them went out right this moment, we would continue to see its light for another seven years. I so remember that. It's because it takes a light that long to travel here, right? Exactly. That's why I'm not worried. You're not worried because of stars. Did this work on me when I was a kid? Because I'm still having the feeling that we're dead meat. The vastness of the universe is incomprehensible. Yet it says in Psalms that the heavens are the small, delicate handiwork of God's fingers. Amanda, if he can create the entire universe in one day, I don't think he's going to have any difficulty getting us out of this mess. Lord God, creator of all, we thank you that despite the magnitude of your creation, you have chosen to love us above all else. We pray now for your protection and provision. Amen. I just wanted to say that I really don't think the weapons are necessary. I mean, Amanda is really just a, a very sweet, innocent girl. The, the most she could possibly be guilty of is simply bad judgment. <laughs> and and, and, and if, if Vince's gas trick worked, when, then, you know, right now she is probably somewhere out in the middle of the uh, dark, cold, desert, stranded, and, and, and very afraid.
Good old Charlie will fix this up. He was always there to help me when I was in the jam. You know each other long? This is grammar school. Oh. In our teens, we used to soup up old cars together. Went off to war at the same time. Fought in the same theater. He even dated the same girl once. Why only once? But Charlie had a hard time taking her out after I had asked her to marry me. Charlie dated Grandma Rose? Yeah, but don't mention it. She gave him this goodnight kiss on that only date, and he never lets me forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, we're here to see Charlie. Charlie Baxter, he does live here, doesn't he? Uh, no. Would you know where he moved to? Well, I surely hope he moved somewhere close by. <laughs> Charlie's dead. Amanda. Amanda, nobody could have possibly survived that. Frank. The old man and the young girl are still alive. They were picked up by two bikers, one wearing black leather chaps and riding a red road king. The other's riding a silver dyna-wide glide with blue flames on the tank. They're headed north. Let's go. Oh. It's incredible. How can you get all that just off the license plate? I told you he's a professional. And besides, we just overheard the biker over there say that he was with them when they picked them up. Oh, this is a beautiful place, Marilyn. Been living here since he passed away. Almost six months now. Just uh, keeping an eye on things until the new owner moves in. Thank you. I wish there was more I could offer. You being an old friend of Uncle Charlie's and all? Marilyn, you've been more than kind, dear Harper. We've got to ask for another favor. We need a ride into town. Well, of course. There is one thing. I, I don't know if you'd be interested, but Uncle Charlie, to keep a few of his old cars out in the barn, you can get one of them to run. You're welcome to it. Check this place out. Huh. What do you think the odds are one of these puppies still works? Oh, Charlie, never let me down before. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Will you look at that? Get the jackpot. Train condition 1971 Plymouth Barracuda. Some people call them gas guzzers. I like to call them an all-American mix between pure power, performance, and perfection. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need a thing. You only owe me for the gas. All right, let's miss here. Okay. Where's my money belt? Oh, Nathan, I bet you lost it in the VW. Well, I guess so. Wasn't much. I was just traveling money. You give the man the money for the gas, and I'll pay you back first bank we run the car. Okay? No problem. What plastic do you take? Visa, MasterCard, Dinner Club card, Village card. Oh, 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 oh. My Happy Kingdom card. No. We're looking for any kind of joint credit card you share. Frank feels they possibly have new wheels by now. You two ever sign up at a rental car agency? Uh, no, 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 nothing like that. Nothing like, um, got a gas card. That'll do. Want it, Frank? Uh, you're, 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 you're gonna give that back, right? He's gonna give that back to me. Yes, yes, that's right. Remember, say exactly what we told you. Shh, shh. Uh, yes, I, I believe my credit card may have been stolen, and I was wondering if you could check and see if there's any electronic history of it being used today. Right. She's checking. Uh-huh. What was it? Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <coughs> Bingo. It was used less than 10 minutes ago in a town called Gray Bluff, Wyoming. Hmm?
guy the car before. Oh, I see. Look, I'm going to try to catch up on some sleep. Will we be all right? We'll be fine. Thanks, Nathan. You're welcome. No. I mean, thank you for everything. You saved my life last night. Yeah. Truth be known, I was just trying to get my money back. There was a moment when I felt that train barreling down on me, and I thought for sure that was it. Well, there are no guarantees for any of it. How do you do it? I mean, how do you do it knowing at any moment you could... Derail? We're all on similar tracks. It's just easier to see the end of mine. But you have such... Peace. How do you do that? I'm ready. When I stand before God, I know that my sins will be forgiven, and I'll be welcomed home. Because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, I'm not only not afraid of death, but I'll finally be able to meet him and thank him in person. Amanda, if nothing else comes out of this time we spent together, I just pray that you'll seriously consider if you're ready to stand before God. I'm having a hard time standing in front of the mirror lately. Even then, I don't like what I see. Well, can you imagine what I see, 75 years old, fat and wrinkled? <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the most beautiful people I have ever met, Nathan. Inside and out. Listen, this, this is the Bible that I carry around with me everywhere. I want you to have it. Are you sure about that? I'm sure. I think it might do you some good. Say that. Frank can feel it. Feel what? It. 
Frank knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> it's a gift. Exactly running from the gun toting mafia pervert, is it? <laughs> Whoever is tracking us is awfully good, but I think as long as we can stay on the over road. Oh Shot too. <laughs> I'm sure we will both feel a lot better after we get a good night's sleep tonight. After all, tomorrow is our big day. You know, Amanda, considering all the circumstances and what we've been through and all, yeah, maybe we should just call it off. Don't you be silly. We are 40 miles away. You've dragged me all the way up here. We are definitely going fishing tomorrow. 
When was the last time you took your medicine? Got lost in the VW. Aspirin's a blood thinner. Would that help until we can get to a pharmacy? Wouldn't hurt. All right. I'll be right back, okay? Hi. Hi. Do you have any aspirin? Yes. Great. Could you turn that up, please? Certainly. Police say the occupants of this gold Cadillac shot out the tire of the stolen truck in retaliation for that grown hornet's nest we showed you earlier. Local prosecutors are vowing to make an example of these men in what police are calling another senseless act of road rage. Reporting Thank you very live, much. I'm Have a great day. <laughs> Stay right here. You'll come with me nice and quiet. I'll smile a minute. Come on. Don't miss Buck Talon wrestling a grizzly bear today at 1230. Step right in, folks. I can't say much for the company. Too many snakes. Oh, I never meant to involve you in all this. I didn't. I'm so sorry. As am I, Amanda. I gave you every chance I possibly could, and you still had to run away and put us all in this awkward situation. Enough of that. Whatever debt she owes, I'll gladly pay you. It's too late for that, Pops. Frank, you see, word got back to my clients back east. So the monetary loss is insignificant in comparison to the damage done to my reputation. If I want to continue on my line of work, an example has to be made. Sorry. I'm not ready to die. Should have thought about that sooner. Nathan, what I'm trying to say is I know now I am not ready to meet God. I'm just not. Put the gun down. She's not ready. Sorry, I'm not willing to wait until she... I said put the gun down! Nathan! What's happening? What's wrong? Give him a moment. The old oh, man's no. a goner anyway. Nathan, your heart. What can I do? Stay close. Let me get this straight. You 
you owe these men over a quarter of a million dollars and you decide to go fishing with your grandfather? Well, I... Yes. I know it may seem a little shady. Excuse me, Miss Tucker? Yes, they're going to be all right. Your grandfather has not regained consciousness. We're running some tests, but uh, I'm afraid he's slipping away. We're doing everything that we can, but a man with his medical history... I, I just don't want to give you false hope. It's medication, if only we hadn't medication, lost that Medication, medication or no medication, a man with his heart condition should never be outside of close medical supervision. This can't be a surprise to you. I talked to the physicians back at the hospital where he came from, and they said they warned you what would happen. Forgive me for asking, but I can't figure out what possibly could motivate you to take that kind of a risk. He wanted to go fishing. I see. Uh, we found this in one of these pockets. Seems to be addressed to you. It's tougher you drop this. Dear Amanda, since you're reading this letter, I must not have made our fishing rendezvous. For that I am truly sorry. You must in no way blame yourself. It was my own choice. I've had selfish reasons for wanting to take this trip all along. I want you to know it's never been about fishing. After all these years, I just wanted to make a connection with my only granddaughter and hopefully share with you the forgiveness and peace I found. Maybe for you. But if you knew what I was really like. If you knew some of the things I've done. It's never too late. If Christ can forgive me, turn my life around at this late in age, then he can certainly same for you, if you'll only let him. That is my prayer. As promised, please find the enclosed check. I only wish we could have been reunited earlier so I could have offered you more than this. Your loving grandfather, Nathan.
Perhaps you have been running from the sins of your past, or perhaps you're struggling with the loss of a loved one. No matter what you have done, no matter what circumstances you're struggling with, Jesus Christ is your answer. I ask you now, what is it going to take for God to finally get your attention? Okay, God, you've got my attention. Oh, I don't know what you want with someone like me. But I need your forgiveness. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I have made a mess of my life. I just want you to take control. I just want to have some peace. I want to... I want to have the kind of peace that Nathan's found. Please be with Nathan. Please, God, be with him. And please just... Just let me be with him one more time. Oh, God. We both need a miracle. Miss Tucker, are you all right? Yes, I, I was just, I... We can talk about this later, ma'am. Right now, I need to get you back to the hospital. Miss Tucker. Yes? I'm afraid there is nothing else that I can do for your grandfather. What? I am sorry, but my hands are tied. When a patient refuses my help, then legally there is Excuse nothing... Excuse you mean nobody told you? Well, they call it fishing. If it was easy, they'd call it catching. Everybody would be doing it. <laughs> I suppose so. Amanda, I don't know how much longer I've got on this old planet, but I'm thinking I want to spend what's left of my life right here. It's a nice thought. No, I mean it. I decided to rent one of the lakeside cottages over there. Oh. Whoa! Yeah, what? You know, I mean, I don't know. Stand up. You tip us over. Gonna do all the cooking. What? You know, when you're living out here, gonna wash the sheets and, and your clothes. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. I'll hire somebody. Why the fool get to the big one? Who do you think you're gonna find all the way out here who's gonna be willing to put up with a cantankerous old man like yourself? You are wrecking my concentration. I'm sorry. I was just thinking that it'd be a really good way for me to pay you back for everything you've done for me. Now don't get him too much money. Don't owe me anything. Get the nice knives over there by the fishing box. And, you know, I'm really new at this relationship with God, and I don't know what to do next. I don't even know how to pray right. I need you, Grandpa. Band the dog. Oh, no, don't let him get away. Oh. What about your life in Nevada? I think it's time for me to have a fresh start. All right, get down there, ready. Get it down there. Get her under there. Yeah, girl. Hey, ah! hey, girl. Away they go. Ah! All right. Now, hold it for me. Boy. Put, put it down. Okay. Put, put it, it. I got it. Look at the size of it. That's a beauty. That's got to be some kind of lake record. You bet your boots. Why'd you do that? No. Considering you and I have been given a second chance, you 
seemed appropriate. Come here. Just remember, no matter what you've ever done, it's never too late for God. He loves you, and I love you too. There, I've said my piece. Why don't you think on this a spell? I'll come back a little later. Remember, eternity's hanging in the balance. I'd love to discuss that with you. Makes a lot of sense, Tony. 